Hello. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Jo. And I'm Andy. And we're here for this. <laughs> Still in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here at Liverpool Playhouse to watch Unfortunate, which is kind of like so I think Wicked and how that kind of made everyone love the Wicked Witch of the West. That's what Unfortunate is for Ursula from Little Mermaid. Although as I will show you on my shoes in a second, I already have much love for Ursula. She is like second favourite Disney villain because first is Reserve Yzma. So yeah, we're, we're here to watch Unfortunate. Our tickets have been very kindly gifted though. Hash ad gifted popping up around <laughs> and some little includes paid promotion popping up. So, I'm going to show you my shoes now. And there they are. Ursula in all her glory. <laughs> I also do have Ariel on the other side, but tonight it's all about Ursula. And we're back in the room. We well, yeah, are, not the room where it happened. <laughs> you can't make that joke multiple times. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we said at the start of this video, our tickets were uh, press tickets from the Liverpool Playhouse. We were sat in the gallery in row C, seats. 10 and 11? Yeah, 10 and 11, yeah. I wasn't sure if we were 11 and 12 then. 10 and 11. Um, I have sat in the gallery before. I think I watched Othello from the gallery. Mm. Um, but usually, I feel like in theatres, that sort of third tier is like, that you're looking at specs. Yeah, the afterthought. But actually the view was actually really good yeah and was... uh, the only thing we had to complain about is how close the seats were to each other <laughs> which in the, i know in the stalls you're paying for the space whereas up you're like yeah, crunched in a little bit but... i think that's the, that's true of any theater like, yeah, yeah that's what i mean what can we watch in play your kings it's like four hours you're in the opera house yeah i know how much you dislike the opera house so. i'm taking a cushion <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is just that thing of like that's just how theatres yeah, were yeah. designed um, but yeah I thought the, the view was really good considering um, and that also makes me very happy because that was the only uh, seats that were left for yeah. um, the Tim Rice yeah. show which I really wanted to see but with Andy being ill we weren't sure if we were going to see, be able to go and then yeah basically long story short that was all that was available so I might have had a little seat in where we were <laughs> going to be sat for Tim Rice in May because, you know, yeah, so, I need to make sure. Yeah, where the seats were, it's like the very front of the stage wasn't visible, but it they didn't, it didn't really, really matter. They were, they were far back in this production anyway. So. Yeah, and if anything, I kind of liked that we could see the musicians more and we also could see um, sort of some of the things that were going on behind the sets the like set hands sort of thing doing yeah, the switch overs and changes and, like, and stuff how like how many that. props they threw between themselves <laughs> and things like anyway you get the head of yourself yeah no, that's that's a joe geeky <laughs> moment of i like seeing that stuff but anyway. yes there were press tickets that we got for free and yes we can't argue with the seats because they were actually pretty good seats they were um i guess we should say what ursula the that would probably story help. Yeah. Is about so it is part, I guess, origin story of Ursula, part redemption arc. Mm. Um, basically, it starts with you like Ursula's childhood, and how she was bullied for being a sea witch and had to hide her dark magic. Um, did do a little bit of murdering, but much in the same way as Wicked glosses over the fact that the Wicked Witch tried to kill Dorothy, we just kind of gloss over. Her mother hid the bodies, it's fine. Um, <laughs> we then move into sort of like the teenage years and Forbidden Love and Triton's father, spoiler, kills a sea cucumber, blames it on Ursula, she's banished. Poor Kirsty. Rest in peace, Kirsty. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Triton has all of his daughters and Ariel is the problematic one. So he goes to Ursula and asks her for her help um, in basically being a strong female role model for her to understand that boys aren't the answer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> she's, got a, she's got an unhealthy interest in the surface dwellers, so do something to put her off. Yeah, which is why Ursula 
steals her voice and uh, kind of there's a, a twist on the traditional Little Mermaid tale that's told and it is very hard to explain this without using some of the more colourful language of the show because this is very much not a family show. No, it is not. Like, there is smut and innuendo, swear words, including a very lovely use of the C word. It is my favourite swear word and it, Ursula shouts it and yeah. The <laughs> Don't be thinking this is like a, oh, we can do Disney on Ice one day and then Ursula the Untold story the next. Yeah, because, oh boy, you're going to be in a shock <laughs> if you do that. It's very much a queer culture musical parody that has elements of having UQ and Book of Mormon. Yeah. That's kind of... And a little dash of the crazy slapstick humour of the it crowd. Yeah, and kind of panto -y. Yeah, and panto, yeah. So, that's an abridged version of <laughs> <laughs> what the show is about. We did record the curtain call, um, so I guess we'll hand Take over you to, to that. the curtain call. <laughs>
did we think of the show? Mm. We have very, well, they're not very different opinions. No. Um, I really enjoyed the show, and you enjoyed bits of it. Yeah, overall, I would say it's a one and done for me. It's just I, there's, I have a few problems with the show. Yeah, so this show was originally um, on at the Edinburgh Fringe, and then it's been reworked a few times, and the original production, I think actually did do a UK tour a yeah. few years ago, mm. was 80 minutes in length. And now the entire thing is like two and a half hours long. Yeah. And I would say there's about 20 minutes of Act 2 that doesn't need to be there. Yeah, it does feel like they put in a few musical numbers and padded it out a little bit. And the story doesn't really progress much during that time. And it feels excessive yeah, it just kind to have of, it in there. Some of the jokes become almost like a laboured point. Yeah. And it lost a bit of the, the, power. the fun and yeah. like, like the first joke. first time doing the joke it was like a lot of uh, in most cases it was a shock humour and lots of people laughing and going what was that and then it gets repeated like three times after that and you're like okay yeah the, yeah, the initial it. shock was what made it good afterwards it's just sort of like eh, okay we get it carry on yeah I think had they cut about 20 minutes out <laughs> it would have been a lot you would have enjoyed it more. Yeah, it's just that it, it felt as we were getting sort of deeper into the second half that it was there was just a lot of content there for the sake of it. No real reason for it to be there. Yeah, I think the first half is much more polished yes, and absolutely. has a very clear storyline progression. Um, having said that, there were elements of the second half that I thought were absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, there is a section in the show where the character is Colette who is the chef in Ratatouille mm. not the chef not Linguini who has Remy the rat on his head the female yeah. chef um, Colette <laughs> makes an appearance in well I, prefer, I don't think she's called Colette is she? yeah yeah oh okay okay yeah, no, she's actually, <laughs> so, she, so I don't think they say the name Colette but they basically talk about how uh, she had a career in France, in Paris, and yeah. she was going to be this successful she chef. Had and a then, lover, and, and then she found out that there was a rat, rat. controlling him. So, <laughs> I mean, she looks like Colette. She sounds like Colette. She has the storyline of Colette. And that character was sort of introduced in the first half. At halftime, I was like, God, that's somebody yeah. like based off Colette out of Ratatouille, isn't it? It's like, yeah. And then the second half, that story comes out, and I just. Yeah. Burst out laughing because <laughs> but you could so see it coming. But yeah, I think it was still it was like a it was signposted. But then when it actually happens, it's still <laughs> it's like I'm not going mad. That's actually <laughs> what they were going for. But the actress who was playing Colette mm. also played Sebastian. Yeah, um, Sebastian with an Irish accent because, as they point out, to have any other accent might be culturally inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, she has a scene where Ariel has no voice and Colette, the chef, is trying to cook Sebastian, except she's playing both, both of those roles. roles. And she's kind of like ducking under a table, popping up with her different costume mm. on, popping back out. But there is like, obviously we could see that that's what she was doing. But mentally, they didn't feel like there was enough time for her to be no. doing that. And, and there was a section later on, wasn't there? Because she plays either Flotsam or Jetsam yeah. as well. But, again, Sebastian's on. Runs off the back of the stage and within five seconds, it's back Flotsam, on. Flotsam's running back on the stage. It's like, how do you have the time to do that? Like, Are there twins? Is it, are these actually twins and we're not? In all it, honesty, <laughs> if I'd have looked in the, the programme and been like, oh, it's twins. That would have just made so like much sense. Com comedy of errors. Yeah, that's <laughs> really hot. I'm going to do a cheesy link up there to our review of that. Yeah, but, they put the same actor in twice in the programme <laughs> because they play twins. twins. But, <laughs> but yeah, if, the, if there'd been two of her, that would make a lot more sense. Yeah. But she had, like, I would say she had probably some of the funniest scenes just because of the physical comedy that, yeah. that was in it. So that's what I mean. Like, the second half, it wasn't bad. It was just, it was a bit where. It was a bit, 
there was bits put in just for filling up time, yeah. I think, rather than actually, I was going to say providing any entertainment, but well, it, you, you know what I yeah. mean. Yes. Um, I think the cast of this production were actually pretty amazing. Yeah. So Ursula is played by... <laughs> Get the program out. I know she's from Orange is the New Black, and I <laughs> yes. know I'm going to pronounce her name wrong. Shauna Hammock. Yeah, Shauna Hammock. So, Shauna Hammock. I think she was amazing as Ursula. Yeah. She had an amazing voice for a start, but then she also had the... So, if you don't know, in The Little Mermaid, Ursula, the Disney version, is based off a drag queen, and Disney did it basically to mock the drag queen it wasn't done in like a an uplifting or supportive way yeah it was very much a haha you're fat and you're a drag queen and you're a bad guy yeah it not good she kind of took the the positives of ursula and of the original drag queen divine and is it divine or divine 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 <laughs> um took those elements in like the the swagger and mm like sassiness but then also had like a vulnerable side yeah some of the like being bullied and like not wanting to be out in public with her forbidden lover kind of thing yeah so yeah i just thought she was fantastic ariel is played by river medway who you may know from rupaul's drag race uk i think she was on season three mm -hmm. As uh, I started out this going, oh, River Medway, can't remember who that is, uh, the name sounds familiar. And then the second she stepped out of stage, I was like, oh, <laughs> I yeah, remember you. I remember you. <laughs> I think she had quite a, a tough role because for a good 50% of it, yeah. she's miming. Yeah, Ariel can't speak, so it's all actions and movements and trying to express it that way and did a fantastic job. Yeah, the crawling off the stage as <laughs> Ariel <laughs> when Ariel's like going away from Eric because she's just saved Eric. <laughs> Never not living my brain rent free because it yeah. was just it's, it's terrible but it was a hilarious <laughs> slapstick. Yes. Um Triton was played by Thomas Lowe who, according to the programme, was in uh, the TV series No Sweat, which I vaguely remember the TV yeah, show. You, you said about this when, when we got in there. I remember what I think was the theme tune. Oh. Oh, no sweat. And I think one of the people who was also in it was somebody who also went to Biker Grove at the same time as PJ and Duncan, but he wasn't there when PJ went blind. Very niche anyway, references. Anyway. Anyway, he was phenomenal. Yeah. What? He was very much buff triton. <laughs> He's buff triton. <laughs> <laughs> um, he also matched the vocals of Shauna Hammock yeah. perfectly. Like, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. imagine anyone else playing opposite the other. Um, they have a duet that's like a power ballad uh, mm -hmm. rock duet. Yeah. And... It was just really good because of the their vocals like complemented each other brilliantly <laughs> and then like to be honest the entire cast was amazing yeah the, so the only other person i'm going to mention is ali dart who was sebastian and colette and plots more jetson who were german ravers yeah house of hoban six style yeah again not really sure if that was intentional or not that's why I sort of said about it's the very IT crowd because of this just sort of weirdness that yeah. was that was there in the background. You're not sure whether it was there on purpose or not. There was one point when we were watching where you literally said to me, I think in the first half, went, "What is going on?" <laughs> <Because> <laughs> it was just it's it chaos. was it was chaos, but it was it was camp chaotic fun. Yeah, it's like yeah, we're not pretty enough for Disney. It's one of the songs. Yeah, we did we didn't make it to Disney, and it's all the it's puppets of ugly fish. Like an angler fish. Yeah. You know, the big horrible jaw one with the with the like the light. The light on their head. <laughs> That's a 
beautiful impression of an anglerfish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we wanted a light so they look really grotesque and horrible. And they did an entire song about how they're not beautiful enough to get, to appear in Disney, which, but they're still there. Which is why I think it's very like Avenue Q. Yeah. Because that to me was very much the internet is for porn slash yeah. uh, having an English degree. And also kind of. the uh, souls as well. The yeah. sock puppet souls that they had that were talking to. Including Ursula. Clive who wanted you to spit in his eyes. Clive is a very twisted person. <laughs> Fish soul. Soul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Worked in both situations, soul and fish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, sorry. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> um, one thing about this production. So yes, it's got all the, the panto and the, the slapstick and the sort of dark comedy. Yeah. It has actually got some really good songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, they do sort of acknowledge the Disney songs that Alan Menken wrote yeah. and twist them so that the not copyright infringing for a start, but also and modern. Also modern, and you can tell what song they're, they're based off. So, um, the Kiss the Girl song is switched to be about consent and Ask the Girl. Yeah. There's a lot of references to like plastic in the oceans, mm -hmm. um, where the Thunberg gets yeah. a mention. It has got lots of modern organizations and modern cultural references as well. The other thing that I really loved was the costumes mm -hmm. and the puppets. So all of the sets and costumes were designed by Abby Clark. Um, the detail on those costumes, given that we were in the gallery, like we could see all of the the detail still did, they translated very well to like further back. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like a lot of the fabric choices were designed so that it looked like you were swimming or that they were moving yeah. underwater. There was a lot of like chiffon and tulle yeah. that moved I think, nicely. I think that tied in nicely as well with the lighting as well. Mm. They, they, they very much set it to sort of give the obvious this is underwater, this isn't sort of. Even even if it was just ever so slightly adjusting like the colour of the of the lamps, but yeah, it was very very cleverly done. Mm. So I think that covers it. I think so. Yeah. I guess we just need to do uh, some ratings. Yeah. So I'll so go. I was gonna say, should I go first? Because I feel like mine is not a gonna have a caveated thing. I'm just gonna go with a four out of five. Okay. Well, I'm gonna give it a free start just because. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. It was entertaining. I think with uh, some changes and adjustments, it could be a really standout show. I don't know. People are probably gonna criticise me for that, say, "Oh, well, the show is the show," and, and well, such. But, but the show isn't the show. Like shows change. Yeah, shows the, change and merge over time, don't and they? And the fact that it started off as 80 minutes and has been reworked, like there's nothing to stop them reworking it again. Yeah. I think the second half does need to be a little bit stronger. I think that's probably why I've not gone to the full five. I'll be honest, I thought you were going to go with a two. Yeah, no, three. I think it's a nice a nice level thing. Of, the cast were fantastic. Some of the songs were brilliant. I just thought it was a little bit too long and there was a too much padder in there. But... The storyline was strong as well. Yeah, it was. It's just, especially the bits that were just weird. <laughs> very, very weird. Yeah, the weird. And it was not what I was expecting when I walked through the door. It was. I was expecting something a bit more fluffy and Disneyfied, <laughs> and literally within about 30 seconds, it was like a nope, forget all about that. Yeah, no, it, it was exactly what I was expecting. Um, oh, that's it. You went into it knowing. I went into it completely blind. So. Yeah, because I, I purposely didn't tell you because what's the fun in you knowing everything? Yeah. So, as we have said multiple times, but I'm going to say it again, our tickets were press tickets, so we didn't pay for tickets. Um, so, thank you very much to 
the Liverpool Playhouse for slash down, every man slash every man. Um, the show is on in Liverpool until Saturday the 9th of March, and it is still going on a UK tour. The I think it goes until like August this year. Yeah. Um, there is another date in the northwest. It's on in Blackpool, and I think it might be in May that it's mm. in Blackpool. Um, but yeah, you'll leave the details down below. I will indeed leave the links to the website of the tour so that you can see all the places it's going to and also to Liverpool Playhouse so if you want to get tickets before the 9th of March you can go get tickets yeah okay and that's it that's it <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching Thanks if you like this video uh, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more reviews yeah um, we're gonna get back more into it after a little break yeah, we've had we've had a break. We've got um, oh, so we've got some videos coming up that we filmed last year. So uh, the Mersey Tunnel tour. Yeah. We've got a lot of things booked in for this uh, month in terms of theatre. Yeah. So I think the next review that you will see on this channel is Richard, my Richard from Shakespeare North Shakespeare Playhouse. North, yeah. Anyway, okay. thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.